Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. So thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about satellite TV and specifically we're going to be talking about the Intellian i3, India 3. So a lot of us, not all, not everyone, uh, but certainly um, some of us want to have TV on our boats. And if you're one of those folks, uh, and boaters that are looking to have TV on your boat, one of the options that you have, there's basically two main providers. There's, there's more, uh, but there's KVH and Intellion. And today we're going to be talking about Intellion. This is the i3. They've got the i2, the i3, and the i4. The bigger the number, the bigger the dish size. In this instance, this is a 37 centimeter dish inside. I know the box looks massive. Inside the dome is going to be about this big, but there's going to be a lot of crunch zones, right? This is an expensive piece of equipment. And uh, what we'll be talking about in this box, this, you still need a satellite TV provider, like for example, Dish or Direct TV in North America or in Canada, Bell Express View to actually be the provider of content. This device allows you to have a boat underway and still be able to, as your boat is turning at an anchorage or going to going to a marina or going to a destination, what you can have with this is this will actually keep facing the satellite on the horizon. In a home or in a cottage, it's pretty easy. You know, the home is not moving. The satellites are where they are. But on a boat, we don't know where we're going to be facing. Where's our boat heading? Where are we anchored? Doesn't matter. We're swinging anchor. Well, you need a device that is actually keeping pointing at the satellites. Generally here in Canada, uh, where we are in Vancouver, uh, they're about 30 degrees uh, over the horizon, the elevated angle. So it's not, they're not directly above us. But of course, as we go more and more south, you know, that angle of elevation goes like this, like this, like this. Remember, the satellites are not directly overhead. They could be, of course. You could be one of those people that have a satellite directly overhead. But in most cases, we're actually, on, especially where we are at 49 degrees, the angle is about this, so about 30 degrees. And it's worth noting because here in British Columbia, uh, Washington State, or even uh, Alaska, we have some pretty serious geography where the mountains, and there are fjords, there are some pretty big mountains in around where we're boating. It's not uncommon to have me mountains that are a thousand meters, even 2000 meters in around anchorages. So there's certain places where you cannot have satellite TV. It's just not possible. You're, the, the mountain is literally blocking the satellite. But whenever a satellite is available and you have the ability to see it over the horizon, and again, around where we are, about 30 degrees, this is a good solution. The further north you go is probably going to be deciding which antenna you're going to focus on. This antenna is good to about where we are to the north end of Vancouver Island. If you're going to go further than that, you're again, further away from the satellite. And because of the angle of elevation, especially if there's a lot of precipitation, which there is a lot of precipitation where we are in British Columbia, Alaska, and even parts of Washington, then a bigger dish might make sense. But in this case, an I-3 is probably a really popular choice uh, for boaters. I would say anywhere from 10 meters to even 20 meters, this is a choice. So 10 to 20 meters, a lot of people are going to be choosing. So that's maybe about 30 to 60 feet. Now, of course, you could have a 45 foot and have a bigger one. I'm not saying it's not size of your boat that decides the dish. It's really more based on cruising. And can you accommodate a dish of this size? Also worth noting, satellite TV is not satellite communications. They're two separate things. So that's why you'll see a lot of boats sometimes that actually have two dishes, uh, one on port, one on starboard. And that's actually one is SATCOM. The other one is SAT TV. Also worth noting, it's possible to buy these domes as dummy domes. And quite often for reasons of symmetry to make sure the boat looks symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing, we'll have maybe this dish on one side of an arch and on the other side we'll actually have a dummy dome there's nothing inside and what we put inside are maybe gps antennas maybe even a cell booster antenna maybe a wi-fi antenna and we'll simply use a dummy dome for symmetry so that when you look at the boat from the front or from the back it looks perfectly symmetrical which is good and we'll put other antennas into that dome and it cleans the arch so it's possible to actually have both satcom and sat tv or just simply sat TV and a blank or dummy uh, dish that you can put other antennas in. 
Okay, again, I mentioned earlier, this works with DirecTV, Dish, and Bell. What's really, we'll talk also about the Mimbox. This device, what's interesting about it is it actually does both standard definition and high definitions for Dish and for Bell. For DirecTV, um, it's only uh, SD, okay? So something to consider. Of course, Intellion allows HD coming from DirecTV, but you've got a different dish for that. So this dish does only actually SD or standard definition with DirecTV. Okay, with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna magically have this box open. It's just simply too big for us to actually try to do it on camera. So I'm gonna get started and we're gonna have this box just open magically for all of us. We're back. Okay, magic. All right, so this is the Intellion i3 Unboxed. By the way, the crunch zone and the amount of cardboard, or not cardboard, but styrofoam that was protecting this. I mean, you saw it before. This box is you know, huge. This is the Intellion i3. So I'm gonna move it a little bit off to the side. It's not light, by the way. And also, this is a tidbit. I'm not gonna be opening it right now because I'm scared of making this dome scratch and I don't have a beautiful towel. But inside of here, when you actually, and this is a big piece of information, there is actually styrofoam inside of this. So when they ship this box, there's actually, you have to remove the styrofoam inside. So to make sure that the antenna itself, remember this antenna inside that's about 37 centimeters in aperture or diameter, that antenna inside is actually protected with styrofoam. So you actually have to, and I'll just move it. You can, you can see there's a little bit fasteners everywhere that you have to undo. So you would do this over, like what we'll do is we'll put this on top of a cushion. Uh, we'll do this on top of a towel. Cushions are great because you've got a little bit of, they give, we'll turn it around, make sure. We, we always wanna keep this perfectly clean and scratch free. And the reason for doing so is because it's outside. And anything outside that is perfectly smooth is gonna more likely stay clean. Anything that's got scratches is gonna have, give a chance to dirt and bird poop to kind of uh, stick to it. So you don't want that. So make sure that dome is perfectly, perfectly smooth as it looks like, probably shiny on the video right now. So what I'm gonna show you is when you open that box, you're actually, you're gonna see your it actually comes with two cablings and the cablings are right here all of that, and even a third one. Um, when you're actually connecting this dish and you want to have both HD and SD content, you're gonna actually need another product uh, that is sold separately, which is, I'm gonna introduce, and I'll have a different video, but I just wanted to talk about it. This is called the MIM box from Intellion. This box does not come with this package. It's a separate product, but I wanted to make sure that I talk about it in this video because it's essential if you actually want the ability to see both SD and HD content. So here's a little shot from directly above. And you can see the different type of connection points, the RF output, the RF input, the auxiliaries, uh, the system selector, and then you have all these different. So I'm gonna give you a little shot from the side here power, NMEA, RS-232 is right here. Again, RF inputs are over here. Some uh, indicator lights. And uh, again, some RF outputs over here. And then lastly, this is again from the other side. So you can see it's not too big and this is the Intellion Mimbox. So this is something separate. You can buy it. It's not included because not everybody wants SD or HD content. So if you want to actually be able to switch satellites, this is what allows you to switch satellites uh, effortlessly. Okay, so this is the MIM box from Intellion. Now, when you're buying the i3, you'll notice, of course, we've got the manual, we've got the cabling, but this is also well protected and this is what's called the antenna control unit, ACU. And this is what you would see from the front. So maybe up on top of the satellite receiver that you would have on your boat, you would have this device. It's not too big, right? So a set-top box is probably over double the size of that. So it'd be something on top of the set-top box from one of your providers. And you'll see the different connections. Again, power, ethernet, NMEA, You've got a little fuse, PC interface, and the receiver and the antenna right here. 
So this is absolutely essential. You need this box and this box needs to be powered and working to actually, that's what's the brain that's controlling this dish right here. Uh, I have, was talking to um, someone about this and they were suggesting that sometimes when you're buying an, uh, a satellite TV like this, you might wanna not have everything visible, right? You wanna have a clean look on your boat. So remember what's really possible is to actually have this dish and get a set-top box from your satellite provider, either Dish, DirecTV, or Bell, and make sure it's RF so that you can hide all this stuff and it's away. So you can actually control your Dish. And once everything is set up, the only thing you need to actually interface your TV is turn on your TV and also easily just change channels and all of this is gonna happen in the background, okay? Some installation tips on this system right here. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's not in parallel with a radar. So you don't wanna have a radar be at the same level of this. So you wanna have this above or below. Ideally above is better because remember the satellites are not directly above us. They're actually, depending on where you are at, at latitude, they're actually maybe at this angle of inclination, right? So you don't wanna have a radar that's right here and then this is shooting through and coincidentally, you're trying to shoot and the satellites over the horizon and you're losing signal. I've been called to service calls. I remember when I was actually on the road in my little truck at the beginning, I had boaters that were, depending on which orientation they were docked at the dock because their radar was slightly above it, they would actually get blockage and they would actually have to turn the boat 180 around so that the satellite dish what had an unobstructed view of the satellites. The other thing too, we talked about earlier, some people are actually worried about, you know, okay, I have a radar in the center, but I wanna have this to port or starboard, but it's gonna look funny if I don't have something else on the other side. You can buy this dome as a dummy dome, and you could literally install mushroom sort of GPS antennas in here. We've done that. We've even installed cell booster antennas in here, even Wi-Fi antennas in here. You could do whatever you want. It's basically a blank space and it's out of the elements and it could make a radar arch look a lot better. The other thing too is when you're ever routing uh, these cables uh, throughout the boat, and this is the power cable, but when you're routing these coaxial cable throughout the boat, especially from here to here, you definitely don't want to kink these cables. So handle with care and under no circumstances, and it's possible, especially as you uncoil it, you never want that loop. Sometimes it can get a really tight loop. And if you get it close, you're going to actually really damage the cable and it's going to have to be rerun. Even if you're also installing and only care about, you know, SD and you don't care about actually having both SD and HD, one thing to think or remember is maybe it's a good idea to run two cables, even if you're only planning to use one. We do the same thing for IP cameras. When we're doing runs on boats or, and I've seen cameras everywhere. I often will run two cables, not because I need to, but because if one ever goes bad, the other cable is just there as a spare. Something that I commonly say is one of the rarest thing that we have in life besides money is time. And time is valuable. So if you're gonna do something and it's gonna take you maybe six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, depending on the size of your boat to run a cable from somewhere to where your TV and where your ACU is, well, might as well run two cables or run a spare. So even if you're gonna do two, maybe do three. So that's something to think about. This is also, remember, this is actually powered not by 120, but by actually DC. So you don't need an inverter. Now your TV is probably gonna need, most of us have AC powered TVs. And so we're gonna need an inverter to power that, but you don't need to. The other thing too, that's interesting about this device is that also when you're an anchor and you're steady and you're not moving, Intellion has this feature that allows you to actually not have the dish constantly turning, right? You can hear it. If you've got good earring, you can actually hear that dish constantly tracking. And so they've got a feature to limit tracking when you're in a location where the dish doesn't have to work so hard. And that's good because it means that the boat is, especially if you've got not a huge boat and you can hear the sound, it makes the dish quieter, which is good. Yeah, so again, this is only for satellite television. This is not for satcom. The both dishes look the same, but they're different. I'm gonna check my notes here, I wanna see. Also, yeah, really good one too is that uh, there's wireless connectivity actually. It's got built-in Wi-Fi uh, that enables this ACU to be connected to PCs and laptops to actually do certain things to it, which is actually a good feature. In the past, we'd have to actually go on serial ports and that made it a lot harder. So that's a good one. The other thing too, and I mentioned this multiple times, I've said NMEA and you're probably thinking NMEA, isn't that like navigation stuff? 
NMEA stands for Na National Marine Electronics Association. And there's a protocol called 0183. And if you connect a heading sensor to this box, they actually know where your boat is pointing. And if they know where your boat is pointing, that's going to help the dish know, make sense of its orientation. So it does, it can help to actually bring in heading information into this box. The mobile app called APTUS, Aptos, by the way, pronunciation for me is not great. So if you want to laugh, feel free. Mom, dad, brother do it all the time. I'm used to it. Pronunciation is definitely not one of my skills. And like I said, the other thing too is that they have this uh, exclusive sort of wide range search. WRS, Whiskey Romeo Sierra. It's an algorithm that allows you to find the satellites a lot quicker, which is good because when you start your dish and maybe you haven't started for a while, you didn't have it awoke the whole time on your trip and you're now suddenly in a new place, it's got to find itself. Where am I? Where's the satellite? So this is going to allow it to do that. The other thing too is that with this Mimbox, which does not come with this package, disclaimer, you can actually have multiple TVs on your boat accessing the signal from this satellite, which makes some boats actually have a TV in a salon and maybe one in a cabin. Or we have boats, they've got two a TV per cabin, two cabins, and then, or maybe even one on the flybridge, right? And they maybe have a little salon there too. So again, you can have multiple TVs uh, that can interface with this uh, MIM box. That's about it. I wanna say, when you're gonna be installing this, give yourself time. Everyone says that everything is easy and then we all feel dumb for not doing it quickly. The reality is nothing's easy on a boat. It just isn't. Give yourself the time. You know, manufacturers are all gonna say it's simple. They want it to be simple. Don't be hard on yourself if it takes you longer than you think it should have. It always does. And make sure that when you start this project, you give yourself ample time. Ample time to do it properly because if you rush through this to get it done, uh, generally you might get really frustrated. The other thing too that I want to talk about, these dishes can actually also be mounted on mounts. There's different manufacturers, including Seaview, uh, that is out of Washington State, that allow to sort of maybe elevate this above a radar or below. So you have these sort of like little pedestal columns or mounts. And the other thing too, is you can again see on Seaview, some of them will actually have this be above a radar, the radar's dear. So they're literally having everything in line with a boat and we do that commonly. And so you're gonna have sat TV radar. And so we're making sure that they're both not in line of one another. You don't wanna have a radar shooting its beam directly into this because it could actually damage it. So if you've got further questions on this Intellion i3, please uh, feel free to reach out, post your comments down on the YouTube below. Further questions or you're curious, we also have uh, this product on our website and we have a whole category just on sat TV. And I wanna thank everyone for spending some time with me and discovering this Intellion i3. So thanks for watching.